thank you very much for attending today's webinar. It's the weekly charting analysis with myself, Jasper Lawler. We're going to look through what could be a key week for markets. We've obviously got firstly the Bank of Japan. They're concluding a review of their monetary policy and obviously also setting monetary policy. And of course the, the Federal Reserve. Um, markets chance, uh, pricing in a very low chance that the Fed hikes rates this time's around. Um, so it means they probably won't, um, but obviously with expectations skewed so far one way, certainly uh, were they to surprise the market, you know, you'd imagine the reaction would be fairly volatile. More likely though, probably going to be a bit of inaction from the Bank of Japan and inaction from the Fed, uh, so it'll be, we'll, we will be keying in to what they have to say. That's the big macro event of the week, obviously, hard to look past it, really. Um, definitely a bit of volatility kicks back into markets um, in the last week or so. We had a pretty quiet session of trading. Um, so, I mean, some good moves in the oil markets and, and um, bidding currencies. Um, not too much direction-wise, but some big moves um, occasionally. Um, but in stock markets are very quiet. That seems to have changed a bit, and I think you you know it wouldn't be too difficult to to pin the volatility. Um, when I say volatility, I just mean more movement. So, if, for example, the S and P 500. If we pull that chart up, uh, that had been moving in a in such a tight range that the daily price change hadn't moved by more than half a percent in um, in uh, going on two months. But obviously, we've had a big change out of that. Um, you know that change has been to the downside, but we've been seen, we've seen some big up days as well. Mm -hmm. uh, my focus tends to be on the U.S. 30. So since I'm talking about stock markets, let's let's bring that up. And um, it's something I first started alluding to last week. And you know I think the theme remains that um, we've basically broken down so uh, through a key cup few key levels not only in this US 30 chart but I think in some of the other major indices as well so that's not to say that we can't just rebound from here and the corrections over um, but to my mind the probability now is shifting towards um, this breakdown of the previous swing low suggesting that there's a bit more downside in order so if we pull out to this weekly chart you know, I've been referencing this previous record high, we're down through that. We're also, as of last week now, uh, well, as of the week before last, sorry, uh, down through this swing low here, um, down around this sort of 18.200 mark, um, 18.220. Uh, we've come down to what was a fairly clear-cut old piece of support here, dipped a, dipped a bit before uh, below it, obviously, but basically in and around the 18,000 mark. And... Um, and rebounded, backed back um, as of last week. We pretty much bounded at, rebounded at 17,900, um, rebounded right back to that old resistance that I referenced in last week's webinar. So that's where we are. We broke down through these areas of, of, of support and we've rebounded to test it. So support turned resistance. And that's that's where we currently found us find ourselves. Now, we'll will the resistance break again to the top side that's obviously always possible um, but my thinking is that somewhere in and around this previous low up to that um, that old record level around the 18.370 somewhere in this zone it seems to me uh, likely that the market's going to roll over again if it doesn't then I think we're probably moving up for a new test up at um, the 18 sort of 550 area, this old swing peak here, and if it does manage to sort of survive this, then there's a good chance we push up to, to new records as well. So this is to me is quite key because we've had a change in the structure of the market. We've kind of put in a lower lo lower high here, we made a lower low through this old uh, weekly swing as I mentioned, and we're up trying to ch challenge it at the moment. If it holds, then you know we're rolling over at least to test the low around 17900 again. And then more likely down to the the 200 DMA, and possibly down to 17300, which is this old swing, weekly swing down here, which we broke through um, only the day following Brexit, and then recovered again afterwards. So that's quite a big level. And then obviously the Brexit low down here at um, 17100, basically. 
so that's the potential we've got going here um, obviously the market was trending higher we pulled into a range now the question is have we broken down into what could become a downtrend or have we just expanded into a kind of larger range and we push up to the top again here um, so that's that's the Kuna 2 scenarios that I'd be looking at but it's still either way I think there's a good probability of the market selling off in here and obviously if it doesn't then again you look to the top of the range I would say because I think we're in range bound conditions nonetheless it's not going to be an immediate break to the top side um, again you're looking maybe for the market to sell off around the top area here and support to that is a bit of intermarket analysis where we skip over to the the UK 100 and we see a pretty similar kind of dynamic so again pulling out to the weekly chart it's it's this it's this low down here where we've got a, a lower high on this side and a lower on this side and just about and we, and we push through it and we did rebound off those lows quite well the week before last and we've gapped up this week but is this trying to suck people in for another for another move lower possibly so something I've got my eye on <coughs> is um, if we lose if we use this swing high here Um, which is where we began the breakdown, if you like, through that previous through that previous swing low here, where we made the lower low. Um, then in between this kind of zone here is um, possibly where there's going to be some interest. The the 78.6 and the 61.8, and then we've got these swing lows right in the middle there, which is you know uh, that swing that's the daily swing low and that's where we've just tested the highs so obviously you know no coincidence that the market um, sold off from there um, so we could have already started to find the top or we could push a bit higher up to this towards this 78.6 somewhere again a bit like the US 30 if that does give way then you're probably looking at the previous daily swing up here it's um, 6890 as the next key resistance zone but we've had a breakdown through a, a daily s the, here's the here's the kind of general idea here is that we've we've not managed to break through the resistance we put in a lower high then we've broken through down made a uh, you know broken changed the market structure a bit we're not making higher highs higher lows anymore we've made a, a lower low and now we're pushing up and retracing that that move so does it resume its decline is that's kind of a possibility in here Obviously, a lot of this rests on what the central banks do this week. Uh, by default, if the Fed um, doesn't hike, then obviously that continues the low interest rate environment, which has been good for stocks for all these years. Um, the tricky thing is there is that, that it may be what they would call a hawkish hold, where they hold interest rates, but they talk up the chances of December. Now that could actually be negative for markets and that could be the scenario in which we see our sell off. If it doesn't pursue in in the in the days leading up to it. So you know, looking at today, maybe into sort of tomorrow through midday, maybe twenty four hours from now, uh, there's there's a possibility that the mass market pushes into this area to form its top before the Fed. So we'll see. And again, a bit of extra confirmation. Seeing a similar thing in the the Germany 30. I'm down on quite a short time frame here. Um, before I explain kind of what's going on there, I'm just going to show the same same idea. Obviously, we broke out out of our kind of trading range here, and then double topped. Um, you remember, I'm sure you probably have on your charts as well, but there's a decent trend line coming through here, just through one of those tops as well, through these peaks. And then we seem to have double topped and then we've gapped down through the, um, you know, through the the shoulder of the, du of the, du of the um, double top. So, if I get rid of this purple thing, maybe. So what I'm looking at here is just this, this kind of sw short-term swing, 
and then see the 61.8% retracement fits nicely on that that daily swing and then actually the 78.6 level fits nicely on the um, the four hourly peak uh, from the last from the last four hours so fibs seem to be working a bit here so we come to the low can we get back up to that high or do we hold here and roll over again again if we do get through there then we're looking up to the, the previous swings and uh, you know if they give way then we're back into the range again just a, a larger range Um, in FX markets, the uh, the dollar's selling off a bit today, and that's obviously strengthening some of the other pairs. But we saw a pretty massive sell-off in sterling on Friday. It seemed seemed um, pretty out of left field. But if you look in the context of the the short-term trend that we're in, you know it's in the right direction. It was just a big move. Um, we basically took took cable right down to 130 again. So now you may remember from oh, let me have a short-term chart there from last week's video that um, I had this 13060 eyed out as an area of support because it had been tested multiple times we brushed straight through that and went that right down to, to 130 um, so that was a you know sort of 200 plus pit move pushing 250 pit move that we got on Friday so you know well done to any of you who are short um, I would mention of course that my, my note at the beginning of Friday was that there's a downside bias given that we'd taken out this swing low here um, no actually I was talking about this it's higher swing low 132.40 so I was saying I was saying based on this the fact that we would taken out here the bias to the downside um, and then breaking through this low down here should take us down here in fact it even took us down to 130 so actually quite clear cut price action where there was a swing low there, got a rebound, broke down, retested it again here with a little um, push above intraday but closed at that level and then just dropped right down into through this support here and eventually found support just at the round number 130. So 130, um, you know, if the, the general context of what we're dealing with here in Sterling obviously is, uh, let me try and spread out my chart a bit here what is the general concept and you know why did the market roll over here and why does it keep dipping well, it's because we're in a range and um, there's no precise top and bottom here but on my chart I've just got 128.50, 134.50 as the sort of maybe midpoints of the bottom and top of the range <coughs> and so we basically got up into that top part of the range market rolled over started taking out some of those old daily swing lows and then just and now, now we're basically heading towards the bottom of the range again. 130, you know, we don't have to head straight down there. Though. Obviously, we could have a bigger correction. And so, if that, if a bigger correction was to take out, take place at some point, you know, 130 after, um, obviously, anyone long the market's probably going to have their stops either below this 130, 140, or below the one sort of 30, 60 that I'd highlighted. So. A bunch of stops have been blown out there, so anyone, any big institutional money buying at 130, you know, they'll have had lots of opportunities to to buy off all these people selling down here with their stop losses being blown out. So there's, you know, maybe there's some accumulation taking place. If you think that is happening, that was the kind of basis of my short-term chart here, is that maybe after this kind of push up here, we get another drop into a kind of better lower risk area to try and buy into the 130 so maybe that would take place again in between that 78.6 and 61.8 kind of maybe in these mid highs down here drop through this maybe drop through this support a bit into this zone and then push higher that's a possibility um, if not another retest of 130 and then a the push higher um, Likewise, we saw some moves lower in the in the euro, pretty sharply, not as drastic as in uh, cable. Um, you know, it's really a pretty pretty messy looking chart still, uh, the euro. So, generally here we can say that um, <coughs> the these kind of weekly swings are holding. So, looking here at this weekly chart, yeah, you know, we had a um, 
So we're, obviously we're moving down here. We came to the sort of 110 roughly. Couldn't sustain prices below it. And then we had this big move off 110. Took out this weekly swing here. Weren't able to close above it but dipped below it. And then finally pushed above. Um, but we got just shy of 114. Again what you could call basically the top. Near the top of this long term range that we've been in. And the market just started to roll over again. Because it's just very trendless at the moment. So just wasn't able to sustain the higher prices we got towards the top of the range. Now it's formed a lower weekly swing low here but it's also formed a, a higher low here so we're kind of trapped inside this area at the moment and it's hard to really say which way the market's going. I think where you want to start looking for the opportunities is if we do get a break below this this previous swing low here um, even with a false break lower and then the market closes higher and you look for some opportunities for it to continue this upward drift or if it actually closes below it then you know then we then it looks like maybe we found a little intermediate top and we're going down to challenge this low if not the bottom of the the longer term range mm. again a messy chart and not not my favorite at the moment a, a nicer looking chart certainly though in my mind though is is dollar yen <coughs> This is this long-term downtrend line. Still, strictly speaking, in a downtrend, but it just looks like it's forming a base at 100. And so the result has been that longer-term trend line forming a bit of a... Um, so you can see it's kind of worked here. We've got a little false break here, these two highs here. A false push above, held there, false push above. And we're basically just grinding down this long-term downward trend line. Um, but we've also had a few nicely connected peaks through here which I've just drawn as a kind of shorter term dash line you could call that line here maybe I'll draw it a different kind of color maybe even red thicker line so that red line and then the, the 100 mark or even you know if you felt like it connecting these two bottoms you could say that we're in a kind of triangle base <coughs> So we obviously don't know which way it's going to break out of that triangle. You just got to be a bit aware of the the fact that patterns in place. So any pushes up to the top side towards this this triangle, um, I think probably you know unless we finally get the break higher, you know the, the the risk is for the market to roll over from there. And then this is a kind of short term area of support, which again from this rally off the low, the 61.8 has been holding the price level, um, holding the prices higher. And then the next level down be the 78.6 and then the 100, I think. Directionally hard to call. I mean, it's still, strictly speaking, a long-term downtrend. And I think a lot of people calling for it to go lower. But 100 is a big psychological level. It would, and it, would, it looks like there's some sort of accumulation taking place here. Um, but obviously, it could actually be some some more distribution into the rallies. Any questions at all at any point, obviously, just always um, feel free to let me know. Um, um, what, so what, what do you mean by that, Warren? Um, the commodities priced in pounds. Mm -hmm. Bit tricky for me to show that one, actually, because we only price the commodities in, in dollars. Um, so you can't trade gold in sterling if that if that's what you mean through us obviously you can do a sort of combination trade of sterling dollar and and one of the dollar pairs but it's not something I, I frequently look at but I'm about to look at commodities now um, if you can explain explain a bit what you mean um, on sterling against commodity blocks so yeah I'll, I'll be happy to answer as best I can. In the meantime, one of the big drivers today is that oil prices are pushing higher. That's helping the FTSE, obviously the energy sector's up. So if we have a look at um, the Brent chart. Here we've got this nice little trend line through here which explains how the basically this 
the, the rally up here ended fairly sharply but um, we are basically in a in a trading range capped by 45 to sort of 49 to 50 really um, looks like the upper half of that range is, is declining but um, overall in the, you know based on based on the kind of weekly outlook you could say that well, obviously we're in a trending environment here but now now we're in a range based environment so the best opportunities are going to be um, down close to 40 uh, but obviously more recently 45 which is the midpoint of the range there's been some activity so a breakdown from the midpoint of the range at 45 um, could open opportunities down to take it to the lows near nearer 40 but I think that's just a good way to view even if you're doing some short-term trading if I kind of just completely clear up my chart for a second uh, get all these levels off simply speaking you know what what are we dealing with here uh, I mean, we're basically just dealing with, you know, this was the environment. Markets trending higher on the on the weekly on the weekly time frame. You know, now we're kind of dealing with this environment where really kind of prices are pretty much sideways. Mm. So even if we're dealing with a bit of a downtrend in the short term here, you know, it's because we reached the upper end of the range, and if we get to the bottom end of the range. <coughs> It's it's far from guaranteed, and you know could end up being a double top and more prices lower. But that's really when you'd start wanting to look for some sort of triggers, whatever you use, um, oversold oscillators or you know reversal candlestick patterns, etc., for the range to be maintained. That would be the higher probability trade um, based on the current environment we're in. You know, it's a sideways weekly trend, um, but then obviously flipping over to the the um, the daily time frame with that in mind <coughs> you know you're looking for kind of lower risk entries so that's when we're looking for um, you know retracements <coughs> excuse me sudden coughing a bit you know into kind of higher areas of probability for, for another sell-off and that you know we've got some here um, we haven't been able to take up this low once we take up this low you know then you'd want for some 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 rebounds back towards the low again to take us lower but um yeah we're in we're in the midpoint of a trading range so generally they're kind of li you know the uh, the least kind of favorable probability trades because yeah, obviously it can just go kind of go either way and still be in its range mm. oh let me that's just my short term gold chart let me look at my own <coughs> So uh, yeah, sim similar situation in gold. Obviously, if I if I move all of these these other levels out the way, <coughs> we're basically trading sideways in in gold. We've got the Fed meeting this week, which is obviously always the um, key consideration for gold. One thing that I've noted is that you know even if you're not necessarily trading the news or following the news, you you know you're attending a charting webinar here, so you know I'm assuming you put a bit more emphasis on the prices than maybe the news. One thing to note with gold is that the environment the environment in general has been quite positive. Equities have been selling off a bit from their highs, and uh, you know, th there's a, I think it's a 14% likelihood the Fed raises rates in September at this point, something in that vicinity. Very low probability the Fed raises rates, and then who knows after the US election, there's a good chance they just don't hike rates at all this year at this point. Um, but nonetheless, gold has been heading down in in the two in, in the environment that should be positive for gold. Equities going lower, and chance of a Fed right hike going lower. Uh, yet gold has been going lower too. So weakness in positive news uh, is not a good sign and if you were taking that information you would think that actually maybe gold setting up for a break below 1300 <coughs> um, and we obviously there's you know that that's if we pull out to our weekly chart again <coughs> you know this was our trend there's you know there's the high, higher highs being made 
and then we come back test test the old high can't get through the resistance come back down big long candle that week can't get through you know can't get through even the previous swing let alone the the old high here so signs of weakness <coughs> in gold and so you know it's starting to look like we could have a move down to maybe this kind of old swing somewhere in this vicinity here there's obviously a peak there oh, i've got a vertical line for some reason but um somewhere in this range i would suspect i would suspect towards the bottom end of that range minimum if we get through 1300 you know it's not to say it's all done for gold but it's just looking a bit weak at the moment so we'll uh, we'll have to see what this this week's fed meeting brings mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I'm gonna. Uh, well, I guess I've got a couple of minutes here, so I just had a question. So yeah, Warren, yeah, obviously, uh, yeah, a bit slow on that one. Yeah, when you're talking about the the commodity pairs, obviously against the sterling. So, if I pull up, um, how do we do it? Do we normally do? We I think we've got it. Have we got it priced both ways? So, so that should be the proper way of doing it. Um. So this is just having a look at sterling against the the kiwi, and um, obviously a bit of a bit of a base forming here at the 180, being the key kind of round number involved, and then a quite you know quite well defined rising trend line to some degree. You know you could be more conservative down here, or maybe discount those two spikes. So. <coughs> certainly um you know if you're it it would look to me at the moment um that uh <coughs> we're about to break down through this level i mean that's kind of how it's looking we've formed a you know a series of we haven't really broken the the trend in terms of lower highs you know this 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 182.80 held up pretty well and now it looks like we're kind of pushing into the lows here but um, yeah let's see how today finishes if you get a, a kind of false move lower um, then start you know start looking for your, your buy setups you could at least get up back up to these back up to these peaks again because because it's been trying to base here for a while you'd imagine this is probably going to be quite a serious move lower in sterling should should this um should this hold up you know you're sort of looking at something akin to a <coughs> uh it doesn't work particularly well but <coughs> you know it's that you know that's akin to a you know you'd be you'd basically be looking for this kind of this kind of move to happen from here that would take you down to a sort of 160 and further I think mm. so certainly one to, one to look out for <coughs> and um, I'm sure that's probably pretty similarly confirmed against the the Aussie let's have a look at that So selling looking a bit firmer against the Aussie. <coughs> Still kind of challenging the lows. But it made uh it's interesting that um you know that's one of the uh, one of those occasions I suppose where you know if you've been trading the um trying to trade the breakout higher and selling against the Aussie, you know, worth checking it against the Kiwi, uh, you would have seen that actually um, you know, it hadn't made a new high against the Kiwi, so the Kiwi wasn't confirming the Aussie, and it ended up rolling over again. <coughs> but it looks like that kind of key level has given way. We're down at a good support, so again, you know, look, look, look for short-term price action here. If it starts to take out some short-term highs, or you know, turns over 
oversold and then um, comes out the old oversold on the short term you know maybe this this support level can hold but generally uh, you know my bias would probably be that's going to give way and we're going to test the lows again um, as per the the Kiwi so uh, yeah I think that's uh, I think that's about it um, Obviously, uh, yep, we've got the the Fed and Bank of Japan. That's really what it's all about this week. Um, not too much in the way of, of the earnings and the likes from the US or the UK. <coughs> um, so let's let's we'll see what those meetings bring. Obviously, the Bank of Japan is Tuesday night. Um, Fed is um, well, I say it's Wednesday morning, London time, and uh, the the Fed is Wednesday evening. And the action in the currencies will be right then, but in the stock markets, it'll be Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. So good luck with trading. Uh, it's Jasper Lord signing out.